Hey guys, it's the Friction here, or Tiger Tank One Two, however you want to call me. And today we are on the test server 9.9, .9 and uh, well, it actually has been live for one and a half week already. So that means uh, some things have changed. Uh, there were a lot of updates. Um, I will give you a very fast rundown, pretty much what happened uh, in this patch up until now. So uh, they've pretty much uh, improved the performance on every PC because they improved the engine, uh, the game engine, which should uh, allow everybody to get higher and more FPS, which I have actually noticed that I get 80 FPS now instead of the usual 60. That's pretty much a 20 FPS increase, which is really nice. They've also added um, a new uh, graphics option for the anti-aliasing part which allows you now uh, for different anti-aliasing modes uh, TSSAALQ and TSSAAHQ which pretty much it, it makes the game look as pretty as it ever has been never has been this pretty so that pretty much are some of the changes for the engine then they have added new tanks which you're looking at right now um, the Speerpanzer SP1C uh, is the pretty much the new replacement for the Elfklings Panther um, which used to be a tier 7 now still is on the live server tier 7 light tank which leads to the RU251 now uh, there's a big um, yeah, discussion going on because a lot of people really like the Elfklings Panther and they don't want to get it replaced I can understand why I just got the vehicle and it's pretty unique it's one of those scouts that you can actually ram light tanks with and even some mediums that are well they're smaller than the Alphaclans Panther um, and uh, they are very very disappointed that it's getting replaced by a vehicle that uh, features um, an auto loading gun which is the speciality of this new tank um, they're saying that everybody every tank is getting replaced by auto loaders and well tanks now I'm kinda sad because I think uh, a lot of autoloaders, uh, there are too many autoloaders now in the game and they kinda make it very hard to balance it correctly. So, a new premium tank that has been added is the Kanonenjagdpanzer. This is a tier A vehicle which was actually used in 1960. It was produced, uh, but not during, the not during World War II of course, only blueprints existed. It looks very similar to the E25 e from the profile, uh, of course it's bigger it's also a tier 8, it's one tier above, but still it's not as big as the other German tank destroyers like the Jack Panther or the um, Ferdinand or Jack Panther 2. It's more like the RHM with a very small profile and no armor at all. This is pretty much one of the specialities of this tank. And also it has a 90mm Rheinmetall DM1 gun which fires 9.52 rounds per minute. It also has an average penetration of 212 and 250 with uh, heat, ex uh, heat rounds and 102 with high explosive rounds uh, but I will fo I will feature this, this tank later on in another separate video I think uh, because it deserves a separate video it's a nice tank and we'll get to that later on another tank that has been added a premium vehicle is the heavy tank number six uh, this is pretty much the Japanese Tiger which they bought from the Germans but never received because of the um, changing tides of the war uh, they bought a couple of tigers in 1943 but they weren't uh, they they couldn't ship them over to japan because um, the only way to japan was via submarines and um, when 1943 uh, the war changed and um, the uh, pretty much um, the favor turned uh, on the sides of the soviet and the allies uh, they couldn't send them anymore and thus the Japanese leased the Tigers to the German army, <laughs> to the Wehrmacht. And uh, yeah, so this is actually the historically correct, the historical correct Tiger with the uh, L36, no, 36L56 cannon, uh, the short 88, and uh, with the engine power of 650 instead of 700 horsepower. Um... It's also a tier 6 heavy tank, and I will make a video on this tank later on as well. So, there are also some different changes. HD tank models for uh, some new tanks, AMX 5100, uh, E4, E3, but uh, those changes are not that important because they don't really affect the game. Not 
like this tank and also they changed the map swamp it's back on the usual or the old state but with some slight changes unfortunately i cannot show you any gameplay on swamp because i've not been on the map yet and uh so we'll have to see until we play the map on the live server and i can give you a review of the map and if i still like it or not if i hate it because i still i, I really really hate that map uh, on the live server right now and as it is right now um, it was horrible before the last before they changed it, it was still terrible so I I'm not sure <laughs> um, it's one of those maps that I probably will always hate so let's move on to the Speerpanzer SP1C as already said this is the replacement for the Aufgang of Panther and um, the new thing you will uh, pretty much the, the thing that you notice right off the bat is that this tank is small now if you if you compare it to the Aufklärungs Panther, the Aufklärungs Panther is probably s twice the size, um, at least the length, it's a, at least one third or two thirds of the length uh, longer than this tank. Um, also, uh, it's uh, very differ differently shaped up front, you can see that uh, the angle is very different and uh, it's, it actually looks like a box from the side and uh, only on the front you have this very very steep angle um, which will be very interesting once we have to speak about the gun depression but that will be in the game so of course this tank will be playing a lot will be played a lot differently than the Elfkrieg's Panther which pretty much with its heavy weight for a light tank was able to go head to head with some certain light tanks and medium tanks for example now the speciality of this tank is the 90 millimeter gun. This is the, pretty much the specialty, and uh, it's an auto-loading gun. And uh, the question is, though, which gun is better? Because it also features a 90 millimeter gun uh, without auto-load, or pretty much, which is just a standard gun which only fires once. Um, the auto-loader gun features three shots, like one magazine with three shells in it. Um, you need three seconds between each shot uh, until the gun is loaded again and there is a 20 second reload time now if you have brothers in arms on this tank if you have gun rammer and uh, some other things like uh, vents you can probably get it down to 15 seconds uh, the average penetration is the same on both guns 180 millimeters uh, AP 250 with heat rounds and 45 with uh, high explosive rounds uh, average damage is the same as well. Uh, the gun dis uh, the dispersion at 100 meters is better on the 90 uh, single shot and is worse on the um, auto loading gun. The aim time is also less on the uh, 90 millimeter um, single shot and is higher on the 90, mil 90 millimeter um, auto loading gun. So the question is which gun is better? Um, I've played with both guns and I'm not really sure. I like the auto loading gun but I also like the single shot gun and um, the changes or pretty much the differences are very very small so in my opinion it doesn't really matter which gun you use. Both guns are the same from the statistics pretty much and uh, they, are, they make this tank very strong. Uh, the 76mm on the Aufkam of Panther was pretty good if you used uh, APCR but with AP you had some troubles getting through some certain tanks now with the 90 millimeter gun you have on this tank you're gonna have a tank that is able to penetrate uh, tier 10 tanks with gold rounds which pretty much scares me because it is a tier 7 scout tank and uh, it kinda shows you that just uh, how how much world tanks has changed that scout tanks are now able to pretty much be a huge threat to tier 10 tanks like uh, also when they introduced the T49 so let's get to the statistics before we get lost in this uh, huge debate scouts and um, their balancing in the game so this tank has 880 hit points um, with the fully upgraded turret uh, it weighs only 11 tons maximum, 10.9 tons to be exact. And it has a engine, which is actually a French engine, it's the Hotchkiss. 
and it has horsepower of 195. That is actually rather weak, but the tank is also rather small. Um, the top speed is 58 kilometers, which pretty much is very, very slow for a light tank. If you look at the M41 Bulldog, which is 72.4 kilometers per hour, that is very, very fast, and this tank is just kind of slow. It's a kind of slower uh, light tank, but it also has a really, really nasty armament, and it's very small. Its profile is very small, but we'll get to that later on. Traverse speed, on the other hand, is also very bad, with 44 degrees per second. Um, we can really get the Bulldog, like, they're completely different tanks, but still, uh, they're in the same tier, so we can uh, compare them. The traverse speed here is, like, 10 degrees per second better. The top speed is incredibly much, much better. Um, and we can actually look if, well, this is only just stock. Variant. If we look at the, um, the upgraded tracks, you have 56 traverse, which is actually 12 degrees per second better. Now, that means that this tank is not as mob mobile uh, as the M41 is, for example. Um, the hull armor is 10 millimeters up front. 10 on the side and 10 on the rear, pretty much zero. Anything is going to hit you, anything is going to destroy your tank immediately. Uh, if you go up against a tier 10 tank destroyer and he's firing high explosive rounds, you're dead. Even if a tier 8 uh, heavy tank is firing high explosive rounds, pretty much if anybody ever shoots you, you're dead. Um, don't rely on your armor, you have zero. Um, third armor is pretty much the same, 50, uh, 50 millimeters up front, 10 on the side and 10 on the back. You have no armor on this tank. This tank is not for main engagement. It's a, lot, it's a scout and you can really do a lot of damage if you're flanked around. The gun on the other hand is fabulous. It's uh, one of those really, really nice, strong guns that can put out so much damage and really, really annoy the crap out of your enemies. Um, the turret traverse speed, uh, well, ra rate of fire is like 7 rounds per minute almost. Um, 44 degrees per second turret traverse speed, uh, I'm not sure how it is on the M41, I think it's standard, yeah, it's, uh, 4 degrees per second worse, but, let's check the, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a stock turret and the upgrade turret. So the view range is actually quite well, quite good with 400 meters, um, pretty much standard for light tanks, and yeah, so, Let's take a look at the profile of this tank. Now, the Aufklärungs Panther was a lot bigger. That's what you guys have probably picked up from this video. <laughs> um, this tank is very small and it's very compact, so that means you can really hide it very nicely. That means you can also dodge shots quite nicely, but since the, the speed, the top speed is only 58 km per hour and you will need some time to build up that top speed, you will probably not be one of the scouts that is running around the field, you know, uh, and spotting people uh, at the base uh, while they are shooting at him, and you can dodge the shells. You're probably not uh, tank for that. You're more like a sneaky scout tank. And, yeah, that's pretty much how you play this tank. And I can show you some gameplay. And let's jump into some gameplay. So, uh, well, unfortunately, I cannot show you any of the replays. It um, doesn't kind of work uh, to play the replays. Um, so that means we have to get some live gameplay footage while I'm playing and commenting at the same time. So I'll be trying to, um, well, to get a good, nice, all-round view of the capabilities uh, capacity of this tank and its limits um, while at the same time uh, well not overextending myself and um, that I keep on commenting because usually when I concentrate I don't really talk while gaming that's just one of the things that I do and a lot of people actually do it's a lot harder to, to do both simultaneously um, if you're under a little bit of stress and trying to, you know, play um, a good deal. So, uh, first of all, uh, what's very important to to say about this tank is that this tank is amazing gun depression. As you can see right here, this is amazing. On the side, it's even great. Like, it's not as great as up front, 
but on the rear it's just as great as uh, in the front. So with this tank you can really uh, hug the ridge lines um, and you're able to, to engage the enemies that are behind or lower beneath you. That is one of the th nice things about this tank. Also, as you can see, the profile is very small of this tank. It's uh, a rather small tank, um, but also it's a very... Well, it's not a powerful tank. It's a very weak kind of tank with its engine power. The engine power is only 195 horsepower. Uh, well, of course, to um, 11 tons. But still, you only get up to maximum 58 kilometers per hour, and most of the time you'll be running around with, I don't know, 40. And as you could see right there, um, we put in two shots nicely into that, um, into that RU-251. Um, and both, of course, penetrate, and we did about 500 damage, I think. Um, but you could see that the time between these shots is really what is quite unsettling well it's not unsettling but it's just it's it, it takes a lot of time to get used to because it takes such a long time to 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 be able to fire again in in a um in this auto loader and uh, most of the tanks you know have a two second um aim time in between shots so that's what most of the people are used to and you have to wait a, an additional second, which doesn't sound like much, but in the game is really, really um, a problem for the players and also for me. So as you can see right there, um, up until now we haven't really had any problems with penetrating our targets with uh, AP rounds. Now um, we will probably have some problems with these tier 9s over there, but if we flank them we should be doing alright. So I'm going to try to get this uh, FCM, since he's behind that, that building. So we put a nice one into the FCM. We're going to get flanked. I have to get the hell out of here. We have a type. And this is one of the things that you don't want to happen in this tank. You don't want to get shot by anything at all. And that was a little bit too aggressive there. Um, I thought City would hold out longer, but that was a very bad assumption. And I shouldn't have done that. So, uh, I guess we will skip this and get to the end result of the game. Okay, so, uh, as it turns out, we won that ma match. And uh, we did 1204 damage. Um, we fired five, no, seven shots and actually missed two, but uh, all the shots that we made were direct penetrations. So as you could see, the uh, auto-loading gun it does have some um, benefits, but also some drawbacks. So we'll try out the um, standard, uh, standard 90 millimeter gun with uh, only uh, capacity of one round, um, we will get a higher rate of fire and some other bonuses like uh, um, faster aim time and all that. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the the thing is, is it the same? Yeah, it's the same loading capacity. Uh, no, which is really, uh, yeah, I was worried that maybe I'd lose this. Uh, but I think the the guns affect um, the. Um, what was it called? Oh, I just got it. Oh yeah, I think the guns uh, affect the gun depression uh, on the tank. Um, that's at least what I heard. Uh, I've never tried it out and uh, we'll have to see how it turns out. Fortunately right now we only have about 30 FPS which is really weird. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I've stopped recording with Bandicam because it doesn't matter how much or with what, uh, with what a PC you record. Um, Bandicam just freaking screws it up and uses way too many resources because if I don't record I have 80 FPS and if I record with DX Story since I don't get any game sound unfortunately uh, that is rather annoying as well but I get like 80 FPS and I can record at 60 FPS without any problems and that is just very annoying I don't know why Bandicam does this um, 
why any other re um, recording um, recording device does. It's really weird that usually the software should not really. Well, it is. I have to understand it. At the same time, it is recording and I'm playing the game, so it's like double the strain. But like the X story does it and does it by only um, using the hard drive without using additional uh, components like the um, graphics card and stuff like that. 30 FPS is really on the um, on the brink of playable. So we take out that guy and no, actually, I think the gun depression is still the same. Let's see. As you can see, we can put a nice shot into that guy with the gun depression that we have. And while still remain kind of hidden, or he just ignores us, I think he's ignoring us, uh, because of this very, very nice fire rate, we're actually able to put in some nice rounds, uh, and he has found us. Yes, it's not the only one. You have to be careful. They're on like a full uh, engagement right here, engagement mode. They really want to take us down. And this is something that you can do with this tank. It's just amazing. It's one of the, the light tanks that has really aggressive teeth or teeth. <laughs> Can't even speak English anymore. You can see that. Uh, well, the rate of fire is, of course, not as good as some certain light tanks like the uh, M41 Bulldog. But still, with this gun and the alpha damage and the pen you have on this gun, uh, you should be doing quite well. Um, the problem is that. This tank does not have any great mobility. Oh crap, they're actually... Get out of here. Actually, balance one. That is actually impossible to balance something on this tank. I'm not entirely sure what happened to my entire team. So we have to pull back even further. I'm not sure if we're gonna survive this. I'm rather skeptical. Did they put a rock there? No, it's actually just my incompetence of driving this vehicle. As you can see, this is like a, a, a medium tank from the gun, from the armament at least, but with zero armor. Um, a tank that can bite but cannot be bitten. That is pretty much how you can put it. Unfortunately, well, this is going to be a loss because our heavies just didn't deliver at all. Um, but I can I, I can think that you guys just saw the potential of this tank. For the sakes of uh, testing, I will be playing another game with this tank. Um, and we will skip this entire uh, yeah, rest of the game right now. Um, and we can take a look at the tank again without the auto loading gun because I really like the gun without um, the, the clip. It's, uh, I think it's better. It, pl it fits my playstyle a lot better in my opinion. So pretty much this bell went a little bit better, um, at least damage wise, but uh, other than that we kind of failed our team. Um, yeah, we failed our team, team kind of failed us at the same time, uh, maybe the other team was just better, but we did 1739 damage, and I, I feel a lot more comfortable with this gun than with the, um, auto-loading gun. That's why we're gonna jump into one more match, and we're gonna see, and, uh, we're gonna see if we can do some damage, uh, it's not, at least in this case, this will be rather hard, and, um, well, let's see if we can do some because uh, what I've definitely noticed in this vehicle that is that it's very, very slow. It's 
it's kind of too slow for a um, for a. Uh... Ah, platoon up. It's kind of too slow for a light tank, and one of the big issues that I have with this tank is that the acceleration is just. It's just very bad. I mean, um, if you look at this, the time you need to pick up speed. I'm only at 40 kilometers right now, about 50 now. And um, this time, you could have already been way ahead with the um, T49 or with the M41 Bulldog. So, um, the E50M was not really focusing on us, uh, the Batchet on the other hand, definitely saw us. Hmm, so we have a T49, one at the base, the other one going around, and unfortunately our platoon friend will fall, I guess. No, actually not. We're the only ones pushing pretty much this side, and we're the only ones going this side. Which is, of course, an instant failure in this match. Unfortunately. So I'm gonna be dying here. <laughs> So yeah, pretty much, uh, as you can see, this tank, um, to wrap it up real fast, it is an incredibly strong tank, from its armament, um, it's not very mobile, unfortunately, that's what really, really is killing this tank at the moment, I think. And that the auto-loading gun, although it is very strong with it, there are too many drawbacks to it. Now, I'm not really fond of that tank yet. Um, I know, I'm pretty sure that tank has incredible capacities. Um, and that I'm just not really good at using it right now. But... I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not very happy with this replacement for the Alphonse Panther, but that is just me, because I'm, I'm a very bad, um, I'm a really bad light tank driver, I can say that, <laughs> but, um, I'm definitely better with medium tanks, so that's pretty much where I have all my focus on, medium tanks and heavy tanks. I'm not really a light tank driver, but still nonetheless, um, it's not the catastrophe that I was expecting to be. Uh, it definitely has its um, pros and cons, but unfortunately, right now, like for a light tank, some of the things need to be fixed. A light tank needs to be fast and cannot be slow. Uh, it needs to be mobile, and um, well, there are just so many better alternatives than this vehicle. So, uh, yeah, I would really like to know your guys' opinion. Um, am I just talking crap? Um, or, uh, yeah. Oh, he's actually... Okay, so I'll see you guys.